Welcome back. We are reading from A Christmas Carol. Listener discretion is advised and caretaker caution is advised. This is sometimes a scary story. And this is our reading, part number 24. We'll pick up where we left off. That's enough. Who's the worst for the loss of a few things like these? Not a dead man, I suppose. No, indeed, said Mrs. Dilber, laughing. If you wanted to keep him after he was dead, the wicked old screw, pursued the woman, why wasn't he natural in his lifetime? If he had been, he'd have had somebody to look after him when he was struck with death instead of lying gasping out the last there alone by himself. It's the truest word that ever was spoke, said Mrs. Dilber. It's a judgment on him. I wish it was a little heavier judgment, replied the woman. And it should have been. You may depend on it. If I could have laid my hands on anything else, open that bundle, old Joe, and let me know the value of it. Speak out plain. I'm not afraid to be the first, nor afraid for them to see it. We know pretty well that we were helping ourselves before we met here, I believe. It's no sin. Open the bundle, Joe. But the gallantry of her friends would not allow of this, and the man in faded black, mounting the breach first, produced his plunder. It was not extensive. A seal or two, a pencil case, a pair of sleeve buttons, and a brooch of no great value were all. There were several examined and appraised by old Joe, who chalked up the sums he was disposed to give her each upon the wall, and added them up into a total when he found there was nothing more to come. That's your account, said Joe, and I wouldn't give another sixpence if I was to be boiled for not doing it. Who's next? Mrs. Dilber was next. Sheets and towels, a little wearing apparel, two old-fashioned silver spoons, a pair of sugar tongs, and a few boots. Her account was stated on the wall in the same manner. I always give too much to ladies. It's a weakness of mine, and that's the way I ruin myself, said old Joe. That's your account. If you asked me for another penny and made it an open question, I'd repent of being so liberal and knock off half a crown. And now undo my bundle, Joe, said the first woman. Joe went down on his knees for the greater convenience of opening it, and having unfastened a great many knots, dragged out a large, heavy roll of some dark stuff. What do you call this, said Joe? Bed curtains? Ah, returned the woman, laughing and leaning forward on her crossed arms. Bed curtains. You don't mean to say you took them down rings and all with him lying there, said Joe. Yes, I do, replied the woman. Why not? You were born to make your fortune, said Joe, and you'll certainly do it. I certainly shan't hold my hand when I get anything in it by reaching it out for the sake of such a man as he was, I promise you, Joe, returned the woman coldly. Don't drop that oil upon the blankets now. His blankets? asked Joe. Whose else's do you think? replied the woman. He isn't likely to take cold without him, I dare say. I hope you didn't die of anything catching, eh? said old Joe, stopping in his work and looking up. Don't you be afraid of that, returned the woman. I ain't so fond of his company that I'd loiter about him for such things if he did. I may look enough through that shirt till your eyes ache. 
you won't find a hole in it, nor a threadbare place. It's the best he had, and a fine one, too. They'd have wasted it if it hadn't been for me. What you call wasting of it, asked old Joe. Putting it on him to be buried in, to be sure, replied the woman with a laugh. Somebody was fool enough to do it, but I took it off again. If calico ain't good enough for such a purpose, it isn't good enough for anything. It's quite as becoming to the body. He can't look uglier than he did in that one. Scrooge listened to this dialogue in horror. As they sat grouped about their spoil in the scanty light afforded by the old man's lamp, he viewed them with a detestation and disgust which could hardly have been greater, though they may have been obscene demons marketing the corpse itself. Ha ha, laughed the same woman, when old Joe, producing a flannel bag with money in it, pulled out their several gains upon the ground. This is the end of it, you see. You frightened everyone away from him when he was alive to profit us when he was dead. Ha ha ha. Spirit, said Scrooge, shuddering from head to foot. I see. I see. The case of this unhappy man might be my own. My life tends that way now. Merciful heaven, what is this? He recoiled in terror, for the scene had changed, and now he almost touched a bed, a bare, uncurtained bed, on which, beneath a ragged sheet, there lay a something covered up which, though it was dawn, announced itself in awful language. And we will stop there for tonight.